brief introduction why we think that open source banking is needed and feasible and then Philip will take over and present some ideas on uh, protocols and technical issues. Um, Uh, the, f the first thing I, I want to, uh, to emphasize is that open source banking is a good attack point to uh, hack into society, to transfer the uh, open source grassroots paradigm to a wider area of the tertiary sector. Um, this is uh, especially apparent uh, because um, there are several things which are common in both banking and financing and programming from a cultural uh, sense. As you can see, uh, there are useful analog an analogies between banking and programming. Give me one Such as the first one is it affects people's daily life and they have to be conscious about these issues. It's different from, say, uh, road construction or power usage. When I use somebody's road, I don't have to care about how it is constructed very much. When I use electrical energy, I usually am not a power plant who is responsible for providing this. But on the other hand, if I do have, um, if I am doing my banking transaction, I have to be quite conscious about what I'm doing. Um, so, it is one of the activities in daily life which really require everybody's attention. It's uh, widely pervasive, and this is similar to programming or computer usage, which at least uh, requires some minimal degree of attention too. The second. Uh, parallel I want to point to is that we are dealing with webs of value. Banking originally uh, came from webs of value among merchants who ship uh, goods in, 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 in ancient Greece or Chinese societies and it was a mutual web of trust. In effect, if we're using programs, especially open source programs, this is also a kind of web of trust. We're not compiling everything uh, ourselves and we're not checking every source code, but if we know that the program has been written by somebody we've trusted or we know it has been re reviewed by people who we trust, um, we also transfer uh, it's the same trust we have in banking to the, sa to the trust uh, in programming. Our data are as valuable as money is. Um, the third thing uh, I want to point out is that um, uh, both programming and banking are very much based on human conventions. They are not influenced by natural laws. Uh, they are un unlike, say, a chemical process which is tightly bound to, to the laws of thermodynamics. Uh, in banking and accounting, I'm just very much freer in realizing human conventions. Uh, for example, I did a um, discount calculation, calculation rules, rules for a commercial e-commerce application, and uh, we had quite a lot of protocols which are all humans, human conventions to transfer to that. So what banking and programming share here is that um, they are both rather remote from the laws of nature. And of course, they are all very scalable. Scalable, I mean, uh, you can do it in small scale. You can do, all, you have all these little uh, Linux accounting applications. Uh, you don't have to do it in large scale only. Say there's no shareware for a nuclear power plant because, okay, the scale is too large and you can't distribute it to the masses. Um, but what we observe actually is that um, banking is a very proprietary area at the moment. And I want to emphasize this is by historical accident. Uh, it was only very recently, or rather recently, that public 
key cryptography was developed in the late 70s and um, that it became well known to everybody in the early 90s with uh, Phil Zimmerman who promoted PGP. And so we do not have much banking standards who already implemented uh, public key, key cryptography. Of course you can say we've got uh, DigiCash and we've got the new HBCI standards, but all this is rather new and all this is not yet really open source. The open source paradigm has come even later and so it's um, not yet included. So this is um, um, this lack of open source banking um, is a little bit unnatural because the free software paradigm is uh, strongest where security is involved and uh, what we would consider the most natural approach is to make all the source codes public, maybe to make even the server world readable and to let everybody hack it who wants to do so. Um, we we m might point out that the technology is basically published and we only have to implement this. Um, if we do this, uh, now it would pay very much back to the community. Uh, one thing is that implementing an open source uh, banking implementation uh, will give us good object models. Um, have Davis talk, talked about, uh, last night talked about uh, libraries we could use and develop uh, low as well as high level APIs. Um, the financial transactions are, could be sh shared back to the community. Um, I mean, currently, uh, if you do some electronic commerce and um, uh, you, you use some, say you even use some public uh, domain web interface, say some Perl script or, or, or whatever, um, the ultimate benefit goes to a proprietary bank which is uh, using a proprietary database and it won't show you everything, it won't give anything back to the community. So what we want to get you involved, uh, get our, everybody involved, is developing a system, setting up a bank which can pay benefits back to the community. Um, the alternatives um, are really disgusting. If we look at, say, micropayments, we will have a lot of micropayments in an ideal world. Say you like, you, you download some music, you like the music, you want to donate some one dollar to the mus musician, and now assume you have to pay twenty cents to a bank which uses um, some obscure and proprietary software, and you don't know what happens with your data, and um, uh, you, you feel you're not supporting the right financing system. Um, so what we want to set up is uh, an open source banking system consisting of uh, mutual web of trust which um, allows transactions to be done easily and to be done in a secure cryptographic manner. Uh, first uh, example to use this would be to start a GPT script and uh, pipe it through that. Um, so the um, paradigm I want to, to, to point here is uh, we, we're just collecting efforts to, uh, to set up a banking application and I think now is the right time frame to do this. I think now is the, there, there is a certain need to do this, as I see from the wide audience who has come here. Before we start with the discussion, I'd like to turn over to Philip, who will give us some protocol implementations. OK. So we had the idea to make an open source bank and thought uh, about the concept. The first idea we had 
to look at the normal banks, what are they doing? Here we have the bank. There are a lot of customers. And when one customer wants to make a transaction with another customer, the whole thing works with the bank. So what we need is a central server or a distributed server or whatever. Yes, that was the idea. Then we taught talked to several bank specialists and they said there are several problems. We need a lot of server capacity. Uh, perhaps if we have about 10,000 users, then it will be a big amount of capacity we will need. We will need the people who administer the servers. And the problem is that we have to be a bank for the um, yeah, to issue the money, and the problem is that it's it costs a lot of money to set up a bank, and that's not what we want to do. So we thought about another concept. So let's say we have those six uh, customers of NerdBank, and what they want to do is to make transactions. So let's say this customer wants to make a transaction to this customer. Let's say he transfers 10 Nerd bucks. So what he does is he uh, set up an email or something like that, signs it with his keys and sends it to the other customer who should get the 10 nerd bucks. Nerd bucks being a virtual currency which is exchanged among the customers. Yes. Better, better. Oh, stop. Okay. So, this customer gets the uh, signed um, email or whatever, and then he has to decide whether he trusts this email or not. So what we need is uh, a web of trust between those two uh, customers, or the other thing we need is a certification authority which signs his, his keys so that he can trust the uh, auth certification authority and can trust him. Yes, so let's say we make several transactions. Let's say this user transfers 20 nut bucks over here and for example, this user transfers 30 nerd bucks. Okay. What we have here is, a, let's call it circle. The thing is that the transactions we made are Schulchene and Wechsel in German. So. The user says, "I do not. I cannot. I have no uh, physical possibility to give you the money now. But I guarantee you that as soon as we can ex exchange the money, we will do it. That's what what the transaction is. And what we have here is that those three customers, uh, that everyone." has um, yes has given away the you know, has has 
sent the nerd bugs. And what we can do here is to optimize the thing. The minimum of the circle is 10 nerd bugs, the minimum of the mounts. So what we can tell each of them is just to lower the transaction by 10 bucks. So what we have here is 0, 10, and 20. And this transaction falls away. How can we achieve this? Uh, this is done by setting the nerd bank in the middle of the whole system and informing the nerd bank whenever a, tran a transaction happens. So the nerd bank collects the information about the transactions and searches for routes to optimize. So the uh, positive thing of, of this concept is that the users can exchange money not not uh, can exchange this virtual money without n the need of a central uh, authority. They only need to trust each other via a web of trust or a certification authority. The only thing the net nerd bank does is to optimize those transactions afterwards, as soon as this is possible. Yes, but there is one problem with this concept. The problem is that the customer does not trust the other customer uh, enough. And perhaps he thinks that he doesn't get the money. So what can he do? With the previous model of the, of the normal bank, there is a bank which guarantees the transactions. So when the other customer doesn't want to pay, the bank handles the whole thing and the customer gets his money. How can we achieve this security in this system? That's possible by making normal banks our uh, users. So. The bank is an equal uh, node in the system. And if the customer doesn't trust this customer enough, then he can go to the bank and get the money from them, uh, get it paid directly or whatever. And the bank. Uh, does the rest with, with, the, with the sender of the money. So the, and for this service of the bank, the customer has to pay the Spesen. Yeah. Has to pay fees. Has to pay transaction fees. Yeah, the transaction fees. So it's possible with this method to uh, install a worldwide network of customers who can easily make transactions without costs. And they, without the sp special bank transaction costs, and if, if one of the customers wants the guarantee to get the money now, then he can pay, a bit, uh, then he can pay the transaction and, and have the guarantee for it. So it's possible if for, for the people who do not need that guarantee and believe that the system works correct and, and so on, that they have transaction for zero costs. And, uh, and have a good possibility to transact money via the internet. Okay. So what we no. should, what we should emphasize here is 
uh, the idea that all the software on the server is open source and it's free software so you can download it if you, and if you don't like the scheme you just set up your own you can clone it you can uh, set up your own bank so this will guarantee that uh, the whole thing won't get very awry and um, we do not think this is terribly difficult because uh, we, we will just set up a server which uh, with a database and XML interface and parse some XML data via GPG as a first step and then we will do some um, cryptographic implementations we'd like to invite you to. The first thing is of course just doing by best and best script. The thing is that you can choose by yourself whether you put uh, uh, whether you give out the information about the transaction or not. But the problem is that it will be rather impossible to optimize the transactions if you do not give out the, this information. But you will have to uh, you you will have the possibility to say no. Um no, it's it's making the thing easier. Uh, what we care, what the one of the problems we had is that when we want to transfer money from one country to another, that the banks want a lot of money for it. And what we can do here is to optimize the transactions so that the that those. Uh, Transfers from one country to another aren't needed any longer. In the same way, it is possible to uh, um, collect certain batches of transactions with um, subnodes who collect more data and who might interchange among these subnodes. So it is a possibility to get some hierarchies in there. Yeah, that's the an, another thing we have to uh, to do is to uh, set up another uh, network rather similar to the n normal certification authorities, which uh, includes the information of uh, how much money the people are. Yeah, how, how much money the people. Uh, how much money I am good for? Yes, how exactly. Much Yes. But if I can send emails to everybody out there stating them that I owe them 10 bucks and these transactions do not go to a, trend, a, trend, a central point, yes. nobody knows how many, uh, how many messages I have sent out. So if I have sent out a million messages stating that I owe somebody 10 bucks and everybody saying, well, 10 bucks is Yes, but the same problem. It's the same problem with 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 normal banks. If you go to ten banks and and they all uh, investigate you and, and and find that you you are perhaps ten thousand uh, D marks worth, then they all give they all will give you the same money, and at the end it's the same. I think. 
Yes. Central authority in Germany. Yeah, that's called the Schufa. Have you heard about that? Mm. You keep track of how many credit cards you have, how many bank accounts you have, how many. Well, what do you look for? But they are not doing this uh, internationally. Not yet. Not yet, that's true. <laughs> well, maybe it's not a technical discussion because yeah, we're, we're on zero lines of code as far as I can see. And, uh, the, the, you, the problem is that you, you want someone that is able to accept a calculated risk. Well, there's always a calculated risk. That's and what you have to charge for. Well, the end user? Some Eventually, the nerve bank in the middle is, is going to be a real bang. There's no, there's no way around this as far as I can judge from the legal situation, at least here in Germany. Who, who's owning the nerve bank? That's a good question. Who's owning the risk? Well, the software the nerve bank is running is GPL. And as far as I can, I can judge the, the German law, you, if you want to run this, if you actually want to issue the money, yeah. so you have to you have to be a bank, and then you're within the regular system. All the all the legal s s setups there for, for for regular banks. It's just a different software running this. So you. So basically, what you are uh, proposing is we, someone who can start a bank now under German law. Yeah. Has to adopt this idea. Well, you can. That's that's the ultimate goal. I, I mean, I'm I'm not I'm not with the group. I'm I just borrowed them in the laptop, and I've, and I've been talking with them for for quite some time. So um, those are my ideas to this. And I, as far as I can tell, this is a workshop. So everybody's invited to 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 give their opinion about this. And um, you don't ha you don't really need a bank. Basically, you need a gateway into the banking system. That's the way I see it. If that is a bank on its own, excellent. But by German law, you need something that is able to be a bank. To no, by German law, you not. only need a gateway into the real. As long as you're not the bank, as long as you're just telling the banks the way they understand it, we're doing transactions here. You might get around it. But I'm not a lawyer, so. Where you from? Where are you from? America. Okay, so transaction cost here is too high to to do this in micropayment. So you're looking at a way of bypassing having to get a bank money to the transaction. Well, basically that's the point. Why why do you need a bank? Right now the banks give you trust. Now if if, if crypto can give you trust, what's the bank good for? Well, getting money. And you're saying that regardless of all this, you're going to have to have a central authority that's going to be able to issue money based on your net bucks to regular dollars or euros. Or the way I see it? Only if you ever say, I want this actually paid out in well, if you're, real if you're cash. Well, you're a merchant, say, I, I make music and I'm selling CDs. Yeah. Everybody pays me with net bucks. At some point, I'm going to want to go buy groceries. Exactly. Exactly. So unless unless the grocer takes takes net bucks, you have, you have to convert it to US dollars. And that's where you, that's where, where the interesting part starts. Like, you can either well, be a bank. It sounds redundant. I mean, this, this structure is already set up. I mean, granted, in Europe, credit card costs are very high, but. There's no, there are lots of different answers, but there are answers, not solutions, as uh, far who, as. But, but who, in this model, who is basically uh, taking the risks? Good question. Yeah. How, how can you discuss this on a, a non-existent protocol? You talk about a web of trust. But basically, a web of trust is a web of risk. Yes. So, I, the only way I think that you can really pull this one up is by allowing all, or actually requiring all the participants to take part in the risks as well. I mean, what's the worth of, it, of their trust without well, exactly. what's their participation in the risk? Well, uh, you, can, you can sell the risk to a nerve bank, basically someone that has insurance, like a regular bank. Why don't you share the risk? So, on what basis? 
every customer gets uh, the same share uh, according to transaction volume? On the or? basis of, of a limited risk. Like if, if I know that somebody rated this guy worth 1,000 bucks, and somebody makes sure that he is never able to spend more than a thousand bucks to, to other people at the same time. There's only a limited risk that this person is not worth a thousand bucks. And if, if he had given ten people a hundred bucks, these ten people will each lose a hundred bucks. But the system, the, the people, everybody will not lose more than a thousand bucks. Wow. That would be something that I think could work, but you need a central system there and not something that, that you can move messages around because you need somebody to track how many money or how many debt somebody is. You need central sharing. information, not a central system. How many? You need, a, you need central information, not a central system. So. Well, I mean, unless you can set up a system where each user has their own database that's impossible for that person or to they have more money in that database than they can hand out. Well, the problem is, do you trust the database? Uh, do you have looked at other solutions to this problem? The thing that comes to my mind, or probably was on my mind before it came your way, is the cypherpunk solution, magic money. What? Tell me about it. Magic money. Anyone know magic money? Uh, it's basically uh, a fully distributed system with a clearinghouse, mm -hmm. very much like the stock exchange. So uh, it's a cash-based system, cyber cash, and uh, the trick is double blinding. So you have fully anonymous, untraceable transactions, and uh, through the double blinding, you ensure that you cannot spend the same money twice. It's so like they, they jump, so. yeah. yeah, well, it's jump. Yeah, that's, double? that's the problem with it. It's it's patent. Yeah. I mean, it's basically the same as eCash, so, um, but as long as you as you have a patent on it, you, you need to look for other options. And as as I see it, I would I would rather than actually talk uh, uh, talk about a specific protocol, um, see it more uh, as a chance to to model the, the transactions, and then have somebody implement some protocol. As long as you can agree on it, you're going to use it. Uh, do, do you not think this feature is uh, covered by the patent, actually? Uh, yeah. I suggest having a look at it. It's uh, somewhere on the site of the FTP service. Uh, an implementation is available. The problem is just that you can only use it for study because of the, the job stuff. But uh, it could be used as, an, as a starting point to implement something like it, not using double blind.
Transaction to someone that's not in the system. Well, if you're worried about your privacy, you just have to open free bank accounts with old banks with heritage systems. They don't know shit about their customers. They don't know how to deal with that. <laughs> they, they're just too big and too cobol programs to ever figure it out who the hell they are working for. Yeah, but I see. They, they, they don't have the concept, the concept of a customer. They have the concept of an account as the basis of their operation. I this see. means that they, they don't know what you are doing. They have no way of tracing. But that time, that's not very convenient. That time's running out. I've seen uh, I've seen Cobalt servers running out Cobalt data tracks right out of the host and pushing it into into internet application servers, like really really big projects. Know, but it doesn't matter. Well, it's only two years. It's two years maximum. Yeah. Yeah, they have to connect everything to the IIS system. The, uh, the main problem we face with the whole monetary system is that we're losing what uh, anonymity we have at the moment. Like uh, you brought up the Gale Cup. Yeah. The uh, prime Last. example is totally fucking stupid. It's just a way to convert untraceable cash into perfectly traceable electronic cash. For example, and it's good for nothing. You can you have to go to an ATM to load the card. You could just as well go to an ATM and get cash. The only advantage you have is like carrying 20 grams less of, of bills. And I think the, the main idea behind this thing is tracing the customer. Like the uh, the euro. Anyone thought of why uh, why they are Introducing the euro now, but the cash is still like in 2002-2004. Why are they starting a currency uh, that doesn't have one bill printed yet? Well, you can go to in theory, you can go to a shop and buy an euro today. Of course, nobody does. Of course, nobody has. Have you ever thought about how how much how many trucks it's going to take to replace every single coin at, just in this country? Yeah. Have you ever met just thought about how much weight that is? How many trucks that is? Yeah, yeah I know that. It's, well, uh, it's not it's not too long ago that we actually put money on and, and weighted it to find out how much it is. Yeah. I mean. Uh, well, the uh, the thing is that they still started the oil thing. Yeah. And I do think we have enough pressure. You don't understand what you mean by your rhetorical question. I mean that uh, there are interests in the banking industry to remove anonymity from money. Because information is saleable. An address is worth about five marks. 
No. It's they are not trusting technology. Even if there were some people out and telling them that this is totally secure, they won't trust them without a shadow uh, thing, shadow bank account and stuff like that. It's not about getting the data, that's nice. Getting the data about your customers is nice, but they're basically just not trusting the systems, right? The technology. And it's not the first thing in, in technology. Things. 
we need we need the interaction. We need to say this take this API, let it agree on, on, on some protocol, both ends be I mean just 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 the, uh, the transaction within the country is gonna be a challenge. I don't know if I wanna send you money, trust me it's gonna be a while. <laughs> and um, the other thing uh, is uh, this directly uh, goes into middleware systems. Basically, um, uh, are you aware of the of the of the bank, internet banking middleware situation in Germany? It's uh, micro basically we have another Microsoft here in Germany. Wokat is ninety percent market share, and uh, believe me, I've I've worked on their system for two years. I don't want to do that again. <laughs> and um, there, if you they're in the Econi magazine. What is that? Wokat. Huh? Wokat. It's a startup company. Wokat. Yeah, they have ninety percent market share on the German internet banking. They're like a client software. To find software. Basically, basically, um, they're saying uh, we're not going for profit; we're going for market share because this is the most important thing. Anybody, anybody can can write an application. Just like we're, I mean, we're borrowing a bank here. Anybody can do that. If you, I mean, okay. So, uh, but uh, the market share is the important thing. It's like. Um, the application is well, not you doing is a key bit of time, right? Or no, basically, basically what they're what they're saying is if you need the information to run the application, actually the application only processes information. The information is carried through the middleware. We have ninety percent market share on the middleware. It's like Microsoft has the best stuff, but they got the the pool of transactions that are served to this desktop. And um, so the open source middleware is right next to it, and, and, and the and the API to the user is a wallet. That's 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 how uh, a normal person thinks of when he thinks of money. He thinks of his wallet. There's cash in there. There's a credit card in there. There's an EC card in there. Stuff like that. And uh, basically, what we need is is this infrastructure. I can just come up with a protocol, put it into a virtual card, and plug it into your wallet. And it and if it's possible, it should communicate with a real wallet. There must be a gateway somewhere in between there to for me to, to put money directly in your real wallet. And um, so yeah, I can the protocol is, a, is an open question, but making 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 those you have to model it in transactions. Just get one transaction working and then implement it, find a way, for example, all all um, German banks will be will be IP based by the end of the year. HPCI, crypto. So it's a perfect opportunity to, to, to build a gateway there and just sit on top of HPCI for a while till 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 the patent runs out and you can actually put real cash in there. There's the SET protocol. There's plenty out there. Um, different different solutions for different banks. So we are talking about an and client server system here, like in, uh, a wallet client and, uh, and a server that is able to, to, to make transaction with that based on, let's say, HPCI <coughs> and it's all open source software. That's so, a and it's secure and we have some cryptography that's also open source in there and so we are fine. We have some, some client software, we have some server software. Yeah. We're still missing something, the bank, right? I mean, I think with this one, with these two possibilities, first possibility, found a bank, become a bank, and second thing is, is have a web of trust, like in, in, in rating people, like in rating this guy is worth a thousand bucks. Do you think you can rate people that way on a trusty, trusty basis? Do you think you can do that? You see, I know that, that that could be a very hard thing to achieve, right? I, I mean, but you don't need a web of trust. It should be the point where if he gives me his hundred dollars, I don't care, you know, if he's a whatever he does. As long as I have his hundred dollars, I know that hundred dollars is valid. I don't care what he does yeah. or if he's trustworthy or what. It's not that he's trustworthy. It's that what he's giving me is trustworthy. Right. You know, so, 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 so there needs to be a unique identifier, something on that that says that this is always going to be valid for X amount. In a system like that, you can have a bank. The issue of the bank. Yeah, the bank. The, the bank. issue of the bank. Yeah. The so uh, and a bank is basically a big pile of money. Uh, that's, you what have to you you found a bank or you have to find a bank. Either way. If you find a bank, what, what should that bank do? Buy your property.
why, well, there's no products at GPL, so basically just accidentally have a server run this. <laughs> How do you get people to use this device? I mean, there's, the, the main problem the main problem in the metric money was first the interface is all one, and the second is uh, it's all there, you can use it, but what for? Yeah. What can I buy with my five million nerd bucks that I just had from your server? Well, you can. That's once again. Or that's. Buy trust from other participants. <laughs> yeah, I can send out many, many fast mails. Ten, ten, ten nerd bucks attached. <laughs> no, no there, there, this is a serious question. What can I buy with the money? Because if there's nothing I can buy with the money, I'm not interested in it. That's why I mentioned HPCI. The second you have HPCI, you can have, you can say, okay, look. Um, me as a nerd bank, I'm not actually giving you an account. What I'm giving you is the possibility for me to access all your accounts with this open source software. So look, I'm I I, I don't have secrets. I I'm just I'm just your gateway. I'm just a server here. Yeah, but getting the merge to adopt this, so like by both no, CDs. No, basically, once the HPCI is the IP interface of every, any any bank in Germany. So basically, as long as the merchant has a German bank account, and as long as well, we're in Germany, so the chances are very, very high, at least one. You just, you just transfer money in there, and then you say, okay, the bank, the bank said, I accepted this transfer. That's like putting in a, a check, and then you, all you have to do is come back is, I managed to get this through the gateway, and the gateway secures this. The whole motivation to, to start this, uh, this system is because the current systems are just too expensive. Is this right? Is that the um, main motivation? Reducing the supports of it? I, I heard the argument they are claiming one fifth of uh, my transaction if I don't watch my affairs. That's I mean, my question is how do you think you will uh, uh, press the cost for your support? Because everybody how, makes profit. Um, 
the internet is not about sitting at home and surfing. So then you're only talking about efficiency. So efficiency is going to drive this one way or the other. Look at, at, at the Geldkarte. That's the other way. I mean, if, if anybody that gets this card into, the, into their hands can read my la last 10 transactions and they're oh so anonymous. I mean, have you ever considered you, you, you're dealing with, with, with a vendor for a very long time and just by accident you, you buy, buy at some other uh, vendor he doesn't like? The next time you pay there, you're like, look, what did you do at, at, this, at this guy's place? I mean, do I want that? But it's out there. Yeah. Yeah. The second people start using the gay card, the, the war is lost again against this, and then it's gonna be it's gonna be harder. So we, it's a it's a race against against uh, other systems being I, there. I think there's also you have too much confidence in technology. But there's also a strong aesthetical argument because. Um, yeah, because unlike um, the the patented approach Magic Money took, um, this is really um, free to copy, and it should at least attract um, people, say, from the um, Linux or cryptographers community. And if these people like it, then uh, it could establish a pretty good reputation and. Uh, Although other people are, are not so interested in the in the details, they know that um, the cryptographers cr 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 like it, and uh, so it could gradually spread among uh, a greater audience. The bank, the bank could easily, I think, um, punch on the same line by stating things about their systems and their privacy and their customers' privacy. Of course. If, if, I would, if I would be a bank and I feel that I, there is some, some threat from the open source community, whatever, I, I could go and ask Bruce Schneier to like review all my systems and, and, and bring in somebody else, like Amazon comes out with <laughs> whatever. And, and let them state that I don't mess with customers' privacy, <laughs> I would have like basically the same goal. But I could, could invite Linus and, and well, have, them have a look at my IMS, MBS based IBM posts, whatever, and, and I would be there, right? I mean, I mean that's the same, the same effect. It's fine. Are, we, are we talking about privacy issues? Definitely, definitely. Yeah. I mean, so that's not about open source, really. It's about trust in things. If you trust in open source, well, fine. Open source is a prerequisite for, for trust, at least cryptography. So I, I don't, I don't really want to use MS Money on Windows 2000 to talk to uh, an HPCI uh, um, server that's written. And, and running under Windows NT. It's like, it's really nice that the final point in the chain is, a, is, a, is an IBM host. Yeah, right, but look what's in between. So. But I think the, uh, the really the, the source and client issue is uh, while you're right, uh, that anything dealing with money should be uh, reviewable, should be free software. Uh, I think that's only a very small part of the problem. Uh, just to bring up another point, where is the money actually stored? At time X, where is my third box? And what happens if that server crashes? Massive distribution. So if the money is on my own machine, and if someone breaks in and burgles my house and takes my machine, my money is my bank the way I see it, um, so. crypted, crypted and broadcasted on every single network you can get on and have, have basically, like I'm broadcasting my, my crypted packets, I want to, to get back in case my hard drive crashes and that's it. for you doing the favor and storing, the, storing it for me, I'm storing some of your broadcasts. First you have to design the service around that because I don't expect normal people to do that kind of stuff. 
You know, he, that, you know that's got to be completely transparent. Right? And then we would think that stored there is is instead of stack up the bread, you have to have a photos and then post it on 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 the sex, you know, whatever. And <laughs> somebody will keep it so I'll always be able to refuse well, my information. Right? Uh, depends yeah. on. You can always, you can always, you can always have. Look, you can always have a service provider that will guarantee you some, like two megabytes of secure space, web space. They will go bust, you know. Yeah, they will go bust and cover the risk. I don't, I don't think so. I think so. If I would set up such a service, like I provide you techniques of safety. Storage. I want some money because it costs a lot of money to set up this system. It's with a perfect redundant backups and what else you have. Well, it's the perfect job for the for your ISP. Direct connection, no no other computer in between, and uh, he gets a monthly charge. That works. I don't know if some banks are generally talking about becoming ISPs because, well. We can store all these data of our customers in these in these big you know holes we had for the money. I worked for about four years now for a bank that is an ISP. They're not talking about it; they just did it. I know a bank that that is an ISP. Yeah. We can use it for they, anywhere. They're losing enormous amounts of money on being an ISP, but they are still an ISP. Well, they had a good idea. Gamble yeah. Bank. It's a
version 3.51 server spec 4 or something like that. It's every single time you see the same thing. It's like yeah. you talk to them, <laughs> what are you doing? It looks it's every every single time you see the you see the same in the same stuff. I mean the transaction is the transaction is the transaction. There's no difference. It's always gonna be sender, receiver, some amount and and a, and and a, and, a, and, a, and a short statement what 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 the transaction is used for, and we have at least a hundred different implementation running in the current banking system right now, and it's, the situation is getting worse because because more people are pushing into the market. Yeah, so it's getting better because you have more than a hundred solutions for the same problem. But you know what that means. No one is ever able to figure out what the hell is going on. Because there's too many different systems that do the same thing. <laughs> too many different banks that do the same thing. And all these banks have multiple systems that do the same thing. And um, it's really cool. And there's, inside <laughs> those organizations, there's people telling their bosses that they will make, they figure out what's going on. And they have this new project and it's database mining and everything, and, and they all fail. And I, I'm part of this, I look, observe it from close by, and I never, and they, they never put it up. Actually, and it just it gets more complex. Actually, actually, I've seen, I've seen some, some of the stuff I've seen, the shelfware. It's like budget of a two, two digit million number figure. Budget, yeah. and they just look at it and like, uh, I don't know how the marketing situation is going to be in three months, so I'm waiting till I know that. Goodbye. It's like, oh, we've we've been doing overtime the last half year to to meet this deadline, and you're saying you don't know what what you want to do with it. It's like you paid for it. <laughs> so, but uh, actually, your thing that there's so many implementations. It's totally cool. Figure we out to uh, figure out someone finds a ball in this product. Uh, and the thing that you want to resist this is just invent a couple of a couple more alternatives and sell them. Yeah. Right. It's a, I mean it just fucks them up. I mean you get really big numbers. It's it's way beyond strong crypto what's happening in the normal financial system. <laughs> <laughs> well, from from the side of uh, building actual applications is just slowing you down. It's extremely, extremely. Uh, you want to be efficient. I yeah, I just I just want to do bro. I just want to do things that are fun, oh, and, okay. and oh, figuring okay. out how to read a COBOL data track out of a machine that stores three pieces of information that should be on other servers, but and they have. They have your complete information except for this tiny attribute you need, and if you know it's going to cost you three months just to know the zip code. No, what was it? Yeah, that's like, what's so cool about all these big institutions. Yeah. With, with all of them, someone in the late 60s or early 70s decided how to do it, <laughs> and then he quit. And no one else understands how how this particular piece of data ended up in that particular place, but no one dares to move it. Because they have no way of figuring out what's going to happen when they do. Well, so they are, they are all they are all paralyzed. But they're not threatening anything. And, and they yes, they are. Anything. They're yes, they are. I've seen I've seen the systems that that they're going to put in within the next two years. Oh man! They, in Holland, there's a, a, a really big re retail organization. They control like 40% of the Dutch retail market, and they are the third biggest retailer in the world. They have, uh, they invented something two years ago, which they call the bonus card. It's a card you get, it has a barcode on it, and it, it identifies you as a customer. If you carry that card and you show it at the scanning cash register in every shop they have, you get uh, specific discounts on people want, which means that every Dutch person has a card like that. Yeah? Um, so all Dutch people agree to uh, fill out a form stating their uh, marital status and blah 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 blah, connect it to this barcode and card, and show it every time they go shopping at each shop. Well, <laughs> I think it's great. You know, it's like you can, 
Yeah, but it's even greater to to. I see. So, yeah, so it's even greater to give some alternative. People are selling their personal information for far less. Iceland sold their complete DNA. The thing is that they they don't know how to do anything with it. They they announced that they would by last year summer they would start offering clients personalized. Uh, discount offers. They still haven't done that because they 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 don't know how to do it. They just get so much data, and it's so chaotic that uh, they they have no way of figuring out what the right offer would be but for each individual. The way I see it, the problem is pointy head boss management. It doesn't matter. I mean, you, the second you, the second someone here we are discussing clear software concepts. There. You have the chaos of an international organization that just fucks up out of principle. Well, so now we can add a chaos of, um, of an open source system with many forks and many diverging uh, development. It would, would happen. It would be an even bigger mess. Yes, so uh, everybody's invited to. There are already some kind of uh, swapping card service, like uh, keeping oh, your yeah, card. Yeah, and yeah, that's, that's what's happening like that. That's a hobby of all those people. They all say they just just to mess up what it is. Yes, a social car. The Albert had a motor car. Yeah, also yeah. one. Of course, I can buy. I carry it on my keychain. Oh, I'm a chain snob. I don't have my keychain here. Because it's time in Germany. I don't. Uh, my keys won't fit easy. That's the uh, car social spot. A uh, dozen times of that. So. Uh, that is uh, 2.5% of Dutch people think it is interesting a uh, way of resistance to swap these cards. Um, so uh, the database miners can't figure out what the hell you are doing. They don't realize that 15% of the Dutch people are occasionally shopping for their neighbors. 20% um, of Dutch people have three cards in the household because uh, they uh, didn't realize that they would get all the copies. So the people that do the shopping all get their own card with a different number. And a couple of other reasons why everything fucks up all the time. If you talk to a, 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 a normal classical bank organization, and I do this because I, they pay me lots of money, I've got two banks, that uh, are responsible for about 60% of my annual income. Uh, they don't know shit, they are really stupid. Uh, it's, it's really hard to explain, and, and my job is to explain them what will work and what not will work. And, and this is consistency in the, in the process. Uh, the, the main thing is that they are absolutely stupid. They, they are <laughs> overconfident in themselves. For instance, when you ask a normal bank, how many of your clients do have bank accounts with other banks? They don't know. They just don't know. They think that if someone has a bank account with me, a Sparkasse blah blah blah, the Sparkasse blah 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 thinks that it's the primary bank account the customer has. It's not true. On average, people have two bank accounts. But those organizations are not able to uh, uh, understand this concept of an independent customer. So they think that they are in power and start interpreting their data on the basis of this assumption. Which means that their interpretations are uh, utter failures all the time. So the question there's, is... There's another thing that is, which is basically organizational chaos and stupidity that protects us from all of uh, the things we fear. Far more than a nerve. And if you start doing an earthquake, you will discover that the only way to do it is establish something stupid. They need an organization. Well, uh, I thought we uh, try to, to get back on whatever the topic was. <laughs> I mean, like, yeah. what was the main, main goal of, of Nerd Bank? Is it, is it the privacy issue? Is it just using open source software because that's cool? Or is it founding your own bank part of the nerd community, what would be a cool thing also? Yeah, this is an interesting last remark. Yeah, right. I think all three go together. Well, I just explained how we thought it was an interesting market 
Because uh, we don't have yet uh, an institution for for people who who like to think about these things, uh, who like not to be treated as uh, as uh, say stupid, who 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 do not want to be protected from the complexities. Um, open interfaces may may offer. Do, do you know a bank which allows you to uh, transact with it, say, by PostScript, so you can... Uh, I don't know a bank that will allow me to put in some PostScripts into their system so that I can do some funny things with my bank account. Yeah, so that's a real lack. Yeah, that would be something. Sure. Um, yeah, still trying to, to find out what, what the main goal is because just if you're talking about privacy, this is the main concern for uh, trying to get some banks thinking about privacy issue would be something, some, some other way to, to achieve the, the same goal. If you just want everything under one roof, like an open source, community project, privacy, and a cool project, and something, then you have to go offshore and just come back, grab 10 million remarks and go for it. Yeah, anybody uh, liking to? The main problem would, would be uh, not having I think the client server implications uh, implementations are are easiest to to implement right from the beginning so the thing can grow and, and become more complex. And another question is, is do you want to put out your out your own money? Like in Cybercash, like in Nerdbox, or do you do you just want to be a bank first and offer accounts first and then think about giving out money? No, the, the current idea was that we do not give out that kind of ac accounts. You don't give out accounts? Yes. Just money? Uh, credit bills. Payments. Yeah, I don't care how you call it. Basically, it's, it's money, right? It's, it's something that, that somebody agrees on is worth something. Yes. So if you call it money, that's fine. If you call it debt, that's fine also. Because somebody is, has to be there to verify and to, to guarantee something. Yes. Yes, yeah, so, so to summarize, uh, what we'd like to offer is uh, bank which does money transfers and offers uh, open interfaces so everybody who likes can can grow their own in, uh, grow their own applications to use this uh, it is sort of is especially attractive to to computer folks but it also could be extended to to a more general audience so so the first step would be to find a country, the country that is the cheapest country to set up a bank in, right? And place somebody in there as server and then go for it. Like Willa or something like that. Sounds easy, right? Well, like I said, I'm more interested in getting in getting an application infrastructure on top of this. The middleware for me is the most important thing I can work on right now because I have understanding of it and I see it as important because like I said writing an application is one thing serving it with actual information that do that means something is, is another and that if, if, if the control of, of the data source is not within acceptable what's the word yeah. 
There are many many words that can fit in here. Well, basically, basically, if I if I don't feel comfortable with how I get the data, then I have a problem. And um, money transactions is the most important thing uh, going on on the internet right now because money enables so many other things. Does actually anybody have experience in setting up uh, banks in small countries? <laughs> this is a real question to the audience. Uh, no. They, I don't have experience setting up banks in small countries. Yeah. 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 not the fun to repeat that experience. Taking e cash and uh, 2,000 people having e cash, 
and um, so they opened up and um, as far as I can tell it, um, there's there's got to be a major deal going on that all some that that some banks get enough market share and just say let's agree on this and just open it up wide open and try to be a Thanks,